in the late 19th century, you had the invention of a new type of store, the department store. It sold a wide range of goods that was previously divided between a whole different range of small shops, but now it was all contained in the one space. Throughout the 20th century, people's incomes were rising, their disposable income was rising, you had a rise of the middle class, and then you also had mass production, which enabled people to have a huge choice of, of goods that they never had access to before. And this combination of mass production and disposable income, the department store became the, the middle man in that process of providing people with a huge range of goods. This exhibition also reminds us of the pre-Second World War immigrants, those people of Greek, Italian and Lebanese origin. All over there were these small towns and the new immigrants, the Lebanese, who'd started life as hawkers, set up their stores. And Abaki is one of those confident young Lebanese pre-First World War immigrants who tries his hand first at hawking and then at setting up a shop in this country town called Aubrey. The men that came into town once a week probably didn't go into Abacares very much. They didn't venture past those first counters that sold menswear and perhaps the bolts of cloth because there were the mysteries related to millinery and corsets and ribbon and lace and sewing materials. The department store implicitly instructed women about their role in society. It encouraged women to be glamorous, but at the same time women were still expected to be a good housewife. By the mid-20th century, a woman's role was becoming increasingly about her capacity to shop and whether she's a good shopper. The other thing about the department store was that women had an employment opportunity there. My name is Lorraine Boyd and when I first started at SM Abacares I was 16 years of age. Just left school and this was my first job. On a Monday morning we would have to take the covers off all of the tables and we would have to take everything off the tables and dust them, polish down the tables and then put the things back. It took most of the day by the time you got down to the bottom of the shop there and um, dusted all the materials and things and then if customers came in then you had to stop what you were doing and, and serve the customers. It, it was all about the customer, you, you dealt with the customer, you weren't rushed, you simply did not look across at anybody else and talk about the date you had with your boyfriend last night or that you were expecting a phone call. You were solely there for that customer and you dealt with that customer politely and courteously. Abercare shop in Albury is really quite an iconic shop. If you needed something, and you couldn't get it anywhere else, you'd go to Abbey Cares. Between 1947 and 1971, over 330,000 people went through Bone Giller. And Abbey Care was one of the top stores in Albury. And so people from Bone Giller, they would have gone to Abbey Care and make sure that People, word of mouth, you hear advertising, you see the corsets being featured in the newspaper. You know, the photos were there. Particularly by the 50s, you had this rise of advertising that was, it was integrated marketing. It was across all mediums. It sought to create a shopping experience with uh, an overwhelming sort of abundance of goods that would encourage people to, to buy. To my mind, it was like going through a maze. There were just so many things on display all over the place and you just wandered through one display through another. Um, it was quite overwhelming in a way. As a teenager, if you wanted to go to a ball and, and you needed long gloves and that, you couldn't get what you wanted, you'd always get it at Abbey Cares. The important thing about 
the department store business was that its main money spinner was women's fashion. And within that, it, the, the most important aspect of women's fashion that was really making a lot of money was intimate apparel. We had a whole range of different courses. You would go into the fitting room and you should hook up the front and then you would fit the laces to fit her size and, and pull the laces and pull the laces until you got the comfort fit for that lady and then you'd tie them off and, and they'd be very good, thank you very much, and that's where they'd basically stay. When you fixed the corset up then you would suggest perhaps you might like a, a long line bra to go over the top of the corset and that would hold everything all nice and straight. Sometimes that worked and sometimes it didn't. Their stock was good. They just sold their stock at a good price and, and it was good quality stuff. The store closed when Mr Walter Abercare became too old to operate it. It hadn't changed very much since SM Abercare had opened the store. They still used the same fittings, they still had the same wooden floor, kept his initials on the door, his name above the door, his cash register, but never changed it. It was difficult for a modern day customer to function in because you had to ask for service. The goods were kept behind the counter in boxes high on the shelf. You couldn't pick and choose yourself you always had to ask for a service person to help you. I think that the department store changed the face of shopping. It led to, in the long term, uh, shopping as an experience for the masses and a pastime for the masses. Mm -hmm.